people's participants who desires to learn more about your culture and more about your language. And we ask you to bless us all as we study your language with the gift of speaking in the Hebrew tongue in the different dialects that we can be a light to all people. In your Kodash name, we pray. Just give us the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and we thank you for the desire to learn your language. Blessed to you, Yahuwah. Blessed your name, Yahuwah. And blessed is he who comes in your name, Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, Mishpaka. So we know we've been um, putting um, the information and stuff out in the groups, um, in the Telegram, but it only stays for a certain amount of time and then it will erase. So if you've ever seen any of the things that we posted in the groups, then it would erase if you didn't save it to your um, to your computer. But we're going to do something different today, so that going forward, everyone will have the information and you can start doing your practice study um, on your own time. So what I'm going to do now is share my screen. All right, all right. So this site is um, our True Light uh, website. We don't want, it's already somewhat public, but we don't really want it pushed out to the public yet because we're still under construction, editing some things, changing some things, um, and trying to figure out some things before it's getting the site to be totally functional. But right now, this is the True Light website. So if everyone would look to the top, here is the uh, address to our website. It's truelightbyyafya.net. Again, truelightbyyafya.net is our actual assembly website. Okay, so again, it's not fully operational. We're still under construction, editing, and changing some things. So we're not really giving it out to everyone as of yet. But since these are the members and those who want to study the language, uh, we will give it out. Uh, how did I get kicked off? Sorry, you messed me up, Adon. Uh, Y'all, bear with me. You missing kicked me out. He took the host from me. He's got to give you host back so you can share your screen. All right, you got it back. Hmm. Hold on, what's going on here? All right, then. Oh, you done threw me all the way off of Dawn. All right, then. Hold on, y'all. Do you want me to pull it up, Maury? No, nah, I'll pull it back up. It's just when he kicked me out, it just switched everything. It, it shut everything down. I didn't even know what was happening. So just give me a moment, I'll get back to it. Is, is my screen up now? Time already, we see it. Is it the, uh, uh, the assembly page? It's the home page. Okay, yeah, so again, uh, Mr. Bakar, um, so this is the assembly uh, web page, which again is truelightbayafya.net, truelightbayafya.net, save it to your favorite so you have it. Um, and like we said, we're not opening it, for, well, it's, it's, it's actually live, but we're not, pushing it or advertising it to the public yet, because again, we are still updating it and uh, trying to get everything on the site functional. Um, but if you, um, but since you hear there are a couple of things that we want to start trying to get functional um, and testing out. So we have uh, one that's gonna be here for um, fellowship. So if anybody wants to fellowship, if you would click on the fellowship here, um, they could contact, uh, contact us as well as you can log into Zoom right here from the website, okay? So that's just uh, one thing we have. We also have what's called Assembly Network. And if you would actually, it's kind of somewhat like Facebook. We don't have the function where, um, let me bring that up for a second, Assembly Network. So, um, you know, you can see where we can add messages. It's, it's similar to Facebook and we've just been sampling with it for right now. Um, so we can go through and scroll through, post messages, pictures, um, all types of things. That's Assembly Network. So you have to go to Assembly Network and create you a login name and page and things like that. And so certain discussions that we have amongst ourselves, we can have here on our um, on the site. So that's Assembly Network. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go here to lessons this is what we really want to focus on right now before everything's um, fully functional. So our lessons page is under construction. So don't even go try to mess with any of this right now. It does not work, it's not functional, it's under construction. But the Hebraic portion, if you go back to Lessons Hebrew Academy, it is functional. So for everyone that have not been receiving or uh, tuned into the Zooms, not Zooms, the uh, Telegram late that didn't get the Hebrew information, it's right here, we're in the Hebrew Academy. We have different Hebrew information here in our Hebrew Academy. We have the introduction level, basic and intermediate. 
Um, what I will say is, if you would, please follow along with where we are, um, because we have different level of information that's here in this particular section, different books and all that, you know, that we use and utilize to study the language. But we would like for you to stick with the curriculum as we're bringing it forth so that you don't get confused using some of the um, books that we may only glean certain information from and kind of stick with where we are. So we have the introduction, which is going to give you uh, vowels, Hebrew alphabet, so on and so forth. Um, we go right here to the basics is what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, we have some, if you want to practice the writing, you can print out sheets that will help you practice writing the Hebrew alphabet. But today I'm going to start with a different um, book. Now, the one that uh, 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 we prefer that you uh, deal with mainly for right now uh, for all the beginners will be the first Hebrew primer. And I'll just pull that up for a moment. So it's the uh, first Hebrew primer. Um, this is the one that goes in from the basics and it's pretty detailed with bringing you through. I'm just going to scroll through some of the functions and I thought I'd give my portion that I turn it back over to Zycane. So it explains all these things to you, has the letters, of course, the numbers and a lot of the sheets and forms. I'm just trying to get to one now. When Zycane have you practicing your letters, this has a lot of practice and it would teach you how to sound out the letters, so on and so forth. So anyone that's beginning that has not gone through the letters or trying to learn how to use the vowel sounds with the letters, so on and so forth. The exercises that we will be assigning will be coming from this first even primer. Um, Cause as you see, it's a lot of different um, exercises that we can do to help you with the language. And as you see here, it's helping you with the sounds and the vowels and stuff like this. So this again, it's gonna be where we want you to uh, start with is the Hebrew primer is what we would teach from um, the majority of the time for um, um, everyone that's new. So again, I know I still see some people tuning in late. Um, so I just want to kind of go back to where we we're at. So um, for those that are just tuning in, we're on the True Light website. Um, again, take it down here, truelightbyyafia.net. Save that, uh, truelightbyyafia.net. That is our website. Um, we're not advertising it to everyone publicly yet, but just to the members for the sake of being able to go here, hit lessons, click on Hebrew Academy. And the Hebrew Academy will bring up uh, the Hebrew information that we have uh, on here. Um, we're going to Biblical Hebrew Basics. And for those that just tuned in, for the Biblical Hebrew break Basics, we have a lot of information on here. We don't want you getting confused and jumping around a whole lot of places. So we want you to pretty much start off with the first Hebrew primer. That is where you get a lot of your practice and everything in. It's the first Hebrew primer. And the sheet that Zarkane Yaquab went over today, it is one of the sheets and one of the pages that comes from um, the Hebrew primer, which helps you learn your letters, your uh, vowels of the Nakub system, and how to make the phonetic sound. And it guides you through that phonetic, phonetic sound. And it gives you examples of, of how to pronounce the words. What I'm going to be coming from today for a quick review, quick review it is less detailed, but more to the point than the first Hebrew primer. And, and the reason why I'm going here is because as we're trying to go from a basic to intermediate level for those that are already reading and trying to tie it in together, I'm going to be going to the student uh, grammar, which is the biblical Hebrew student grammar, which is going to be more so for Batzion um, and those that already are familiar with making the vowel sounds. Uh, my Bats, Amiria, uh, Akoti, Shaquan, those that have already learned their vowels and things like that and are already reading. Um, and of course, the Akim that already reads. But this is going to be to help with more uh, reading better or bringing forth the sounds and uh, more understanding of certain things or a, a more direct to the point. It doesn't have as much information as the Hebrew uh, primer, but it gets right to some key points fast. So um, I know we've been going over the basics, so I'm going to go, go ahead and we're going to do a quick review from out of this book, just uh, uh, in short. All right, so and you see how this one gets quick and to the point unlike the Hebrew primer, which is very detailed and explaining these things to you. So lesson one, the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet is composed of the following. It consists of 23 constants, read right to left. Uh, as I can, Yaakov had already covered that, the reason why the numbers of the alphabet changes. And so we have the alphabet here, Hebrew is read from uh, right to left, all right? So real quick, uh, can someone uh, name the alphabet for me going from right to left? Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Adalit, Hey, Vav, Zayn, Tet, Chet, Tet, 
Yod, Kuf, uh, Lamed, Mem, Noon, Samek, Sadi, no, um, Ain, uh, Pet, Cuff. No, no, pay or fay. Pay, pay, right. Um, Sadi, Kuf. So you said this one already for here. So this is more of like Kaf and this Kaf. is- Kaf, yes, mm -hmm. that's Kuf, that's Kaf. right. Mm -hmm. And Resh, mm -hmm. Shen, mm -hmm. Shen, and Tav. Okay, so it says 23 here, but when me and Zarkane teach it in most of the Hebrew teach, we say 22 consonants. What they have did was they've, uh, they say the Shen and Sin, but when you actually look at what the ancients used, it was the Shen uh, or the Shen which was the SH, but now they have the, uh, the uh, we well, actually have the sin shin here. So with it on the left side, it's pronounced as the S as sin. And when the dot is on the right side of shin and then tie. So they doubled this one up when, when in the alphabet, it will actually only be one of these with the understanding of the dot being placed on one side or the other, producing either the S or the SH sound, depending on the placement of the dot that's on the top. All right. It said it has five letters with alternate final forms that are used when the letter occurs at the end of a word, all right? At the end of a word. Um, so they're giving you the regular form of the letters and again, from right to left, and then they're giving you the final form. These letters that have the exact, they have the exact same numerical value, the exact same phonetic sound. It is just, they have a final form. So at the beginning of the word or in the middle of a word, this is the uh, form they would say, at the end of a word, this is the form that they would take. So these are uh, the uh, five letters that have final forms. Could someone tell me these uh, these uh, letters? I'm, I'm eating go. Toda, um, Kaf, oh, Mem, Noon, Perfe, Zadi. Okay. So as he said, we have the Kaf, Mem, Noon, Peofe, and Zade, which this is the exact same thing at the end of a word. This is what they look like. Exact same sound, Kaf, Mem, Noon, uh, Peofe, and Zade. This is at the end. And it gave you an example here. Um, when we have here, uh, the Shin, Mem, uh, Yod, Mem. Does anyone want to try this word? Shamayim. Shemayim, so the mem on the end, so Shemayim is the word for the heavens, and it's showing you that at the end, as an example, this will be the same letter um, here, mem, the final form mem, and they're showing you at the end of a word, when it's joined together, we'll have this final form, okay? And the, uh, like I said, I'm gonna breeze through it now because you have access to this for yourself to go back and study over it, but I'm just kind of showing you uh, why I like this for, some of the intermediate students because of something that we're trying to, they're working on their reading. So we want to get to them to notice and how to syllabalize or how to pronounce words uh, uh, better uh, when they start getting to different words. So it says it has six letters, um, six letters, and we're going to go from left to right. Since I'm reading from left to right, uh, someone tell me these letters. Can I volunteer? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, you said left to right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll go left to right, since that's the way I'm reading. Mm -hmm. Tall. Okay. Pay. Okay. Um, ka. Uh, mm -hmm. you on it. That's it. You on it. What is okay? Is that is that that's more like the sound? So, uh, that's like the ch. K sometimes, the CH, sometimes it can be a ch sort of sound, and then sometimes it can just be the k sound. So, what's the name of it? Do you know it? Cough, cough. Okay, mm -hmm. um, Dalit. Ballot, uh huh. Good job. Gimel. Gimel, uh huh. Um, 
Bet. Bet, okay. So if you look here to the left, oh, that was a good job, Akoti. So these are what they call the baguette cafet letters, okay? Um, and they are called baguette cafet, which can appear with a dot in them called the Dagesh call. Some call it the Gesh lean, the Gesh call or the Gesh lean, and we can just say the Dagesh. Three of these letters have two pronunciations, one with the Dagesh call and one without it, okay? So what it's basically letting us know is the way we say, sometimes we say bet or vet, um, that's because with the dot in it, we call it bet. Without the dot, we call it vet. And so it's also letting us know the way it will be pronounced if it had the dot or without the dot. And again, it says six letters are these baguette confet letters, or, which are letters that can take the Dagesh call or the Dagesh lean or not, which is simply the dot. Some of these terms you don't have to really remember, such as baguette confet and Dagesh call or Dagesh lean. But for the sake of being able to discuss it, you know, that's what it's called, okay, which is the dot. So there's six letters that can take the dot or be without the dot. And these are the letters that she's already uh, went over them. So we have the Tav, Payafe, uh, Kaf, Dalit, Gamel, and Bet, or Vet, okay? So now what it's showing is when you see uh, the, uh, the Bet with the dot in it, it's like B as in boy. But the bet without the dot is considered vet like V in voice, okay? So when it has the dot, you pronounce it as V in boy. Without the Dagesh or without the dot, it's V as in voice. Um, and, and the B sound, well, I'll get to that later. I, I'll come back to that. Um, then we have the cough here. Um, uh, the cough, and Zakane was going over this last week, but the cough or cough, whenever you pronounce it somewhat different. So you have, with the dot, is the, uh, the cough is, like K and keep k sound k and keep, but the cough without the, the gesh or without the dot is CH as in Bach. Bach is more throaty, a more throaty sound. Um, and that's how you syllabalize the words. So then we have uh, what's considered the pay or fe. So uh, when you see the pay or fe with the dot or the, the gesh in it, it's going to be P as in pie. So that's when we pronounce it as a p with a P sound. But without the dot or without the gesh, it's going to be like F as in fish or uh, like PH as in phone, the F, the uh, more of the F sound versus the P sound. Then you have the gamel, uh, gamel with the gesh. And, um, and then you also have the gamel like G and give. Um, they still, it's still going to be the same letter. Same with the dialect with or without the dot, it's like D and dog. And the tav and the, uh, the tav with the gesh or without it, it's still T and Tide. So three of them that when they have the Dagesh, um, the Dagesh lean in it, the sound would change. And that's going to be the uh, the bet, the cough, and the pay or fe, okay? And when you go into uh, the Hebrew primer, like I said, it'll be a while before some of this information comes up because in the Hebrew primer, it's going to want you to get familiar with the letters, the vowels, and it takes you through them and, and it's going to let you work on like two vowels at a time and to, to make you memorize them. It's gonna give you an exercise for you to memorize the vowels. But like I say, this is getting straight to um, the point. Um, so um, again, um, this is now going into the uh, alphabet, still lesson one. So um, it's telling you the aleph. So um, a lot of times people say the aleph is silent. The aleph is not really truly silent, but for the sake of English speakers, um, we say that it's silent but it's actually like a glutal, what they consider a glu glutal stop, or they say, or silent. So it's not something that you uh, say with a lot of pronunciation, but it's more of like a breath or a throaty sound. And um, it will tell you like in uh-oh, like the, the sound that your throat makes right before the O oh and uh-oh, like, you know, it's the, the way it's the, uh, your throat, throat tightens up a little bit, but we pronounce it more as a uh, sound, like uh, instead of saying ah, you know, it's more like ah. Uh, you know, um, it's what we actually recognize it as, but it considered a glutal stop or silent. So as I can say, for the sake of learning the modern or the biblical Hebrew, a lot of times we recognize the Aleph as um, a silent letter and you, it takes on the vowel sound that's under it. So um, it has a quamets under, under here, under this Aleph, which means the quamets has an ah sound. So you pronounce it as ah, but they're saying without it, it does not have any sound. Um, we have the bet. Um, the bet, like in boy, so on and so forth. We've already went over all this. 
So I'm not really going to go into this. You can come back and look at it again for your own, doing your own time, because we've already run over the letters. Zarkane has done a thorough job on that. But um, notice that the Hebrew alphabet has several letters which are pronounced the same. So that's going to be the ayin and aleph, because both of these are glutal, uh, are glutal type letters, or what they call considered glutal stops. And I'm going to use the term almost silent. They're not truly silent, almost silent, or breathy, or throaty. Um, then you have what they consider the bet and vet, um, or the vet shliga. Should I say the vet and vav? As I came, Yaqua was saying, we ourselves really do not utilize the V sound um, that often, if ever. Um, and so anytime I normally see a bet or commonly a uh, vav, I recognize this as a bet, not a vet, and this as a wow and not a vav. But for the sake of being all things to all people, and the way they may speak it in the land and the way uh, where certain dialects are in the land, which may be some of the majority population where you're at, depending on where you're at in the land, they will use, uh, they will recognize um, this modern dialect. So vet and vav have the same um, sound, which is going to be V as in voice. And kind of you heard what Zakane said earlier about some of them. He don't feel like the most high would be really that redundant with everything taking on pretty much the same sounds because, you know, the most high is very specific with things, but for the sake of how the language is modern, this modern version, the vet, the vet and vav or the bet and wa has pronounced the same sound, V as in voice. Also, we have uh, the ket and the kaf, which would make uh, the same sound, which would be uh, uh, the ch as in bach, as in bach. And this is what my Isha, when she went over her letter today that she was discussing, that the tet and the tav, uh, and this has the degesh in it, is uh, T like in tide, but uh, per uh, my understanding and Zakane's understanding and the majority of the Hebrews that I study with, as well as those that are outside the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite community, but some of the um, Gentile Hebrew scholars that uh, I subscribe to or I agree with or agree with their research because their research lines up with uh, our research, they would tell you that the, the uh, that the uh, tav is actually more of a th sound, and so. Uh, but for the sake of this uh, course, tet and tav has the t as in tide. Um, then we have here the kaf and the kuf, and it's both going to be k as in keep. A lot of times you will hear us use the uh, kuf sort of as like a q sound as well, like when we say kodash kodash, or when you hear someone say kodash. Uh, 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 Kodesh, they're, they're pronouncing this as a K. Some say Kwadash, Kwadash, or Kwadash, Kwadashim. Uh, some use this as a Q. So the sound that uh, uh, either the hard Q or K makes, um, these two letters are saying to make the same sound, which is going to be the Chaf and the, uh, the Kuf, which is going to be uh, uh, K like in Keep. And then we have here the Semek, uh, Semach, Semek, and the Sin. Remember the shin, generally is what it is, but when the dot is on the left corner, then it's going to be sin. If it's on the right right side, then it would be shin, and that would be sh. But when it's on the left hand side, it pr pronounces an s as in sit. All right. So um, this is something that I think Zachary mentioned last week that I was going over in the men's study. So one of the things is you see here um, traditionally they have here the yod hey wahe, which is the name of the Most High. You see what the book text is going to tell you. Traditionally pronounced Adonai. There is no way possible at all that yod hey wah -Hey can pronounce Adonai. So when you, uh, what they've done is they take the vowel points and the reason why we don't subscribe to the vowel points all the time or a lot of times is because when it comes to the names of the father and the son, um, they try to hide the name of the father and the son and they try to scramble it by putting vowel points. But this yod represents a Y. So how in the world can you get a A at the beginning? That's a Y, you know what I'm saying? The hey represents the H. Where are you going to get the D from? It's not possible for yod hey wah hey to ever pronounce Adonai. That is traditionally, they inserted the term Adonai, which means master or Lord, but it just goes to show you that even when they're teaching the language from their books, they're still going to insert that thought process. And then it says, oh, Hashem. Hashem means the name. Hashem means the name. Yod, hey, why, hey, cannot spell Hashem. 
Hashem starts with an H. It would have to start with a het for it to be Hashem. It would need to be a het and a um, and a shin, which is that letter here, for you to get Hashem. You need a het, a shin, and a, a final form mem to have Hashem. So Yod Hey Wah -He could never pronounce Adonai, which is the word for Master or Lord, or Hashem, which is the name. Um, it says it is possible that this name was originally pronounced Yahweh. Um, I, we also do not subscribe to Yahweh. I don't knock anyone to use Yahweh. I know when a lot of people first come to the walk, um, they're taught the name Yahweh as the name of the Most High. Um, uh, but the reason why um, we don't subscribe to Yahweh is because of the vowel points. So if we actually go to, and we we'll go to it later in scriptures, if you, uh, so I'm going to talk about it here. So y'all know the vowel points. So, I mean, the vowels. So we have yod hey wah -he. This is with no, no uh, vowel points whatsoever. So if a person had pronounced this with no vowel points at ever, that's yod hey wah -he, which someone pronounced to me, just seeing this with no vowels, not trying to go anywhere where anyone has ever told you any pronunciation. How would you pronounce this? I can't yikwa, don't respond. Um, would someone try to sound this out? yod hey wah -he, without trying to insert any vowel sounds, just raw, just yod hey wah -he, what would that pronounce? Yahawa. So we have Yahawa. Some may say, so we have him saying Yahawa. Some say Yahwa, because what they're doing is they're trying to pronounce these letters. And at the root of any Hebrew, uh, each Hebrew word has what's considered a two letter, but majority of the time, a three letter root word that's, that begins with A class vowels. So at the root of Hebrew words, they have A class vowels. And then for them to, as, and that's what Zakane was saying, at the parent root, it's a class vowel. The father's name is made up of the root word right here. I'm going to block out the yod, hey, wa, hey, which is hawa, okay, which means to be or to exist. And another form of hawa would be haya, which means to be or to exist. So therefore, the father's name, um, the yod makes it a masculine, makes it a masculine. So you have uh, what we call, uh, some say yawa. Some say Yahweh, um, and that's even before any vowel points. But what you cannot get without any vowel points here is Adonai or Hashem, because there's no hey starting it off. A Y does not make the A or the H sound, so we can see the deceit that's there. But now going back to once they do add the vowel points, and you have some that would say um, Yahuwah, Yahoah, Yahweh, the different pronunciations because of the, uh, the, the way Hebrew is pronounced with the throaty sounds and the breaths. So you will hear us using different pronunciations of the name, but the way it's vowel pointed, you have yod, hey, and this wa right here under this wa, they will have a quamets under this wa. A quamets is a what type vowel, someone? A class. A class, which makes what sound? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. So if quamets is an A-class vowel, which makes an A sound, if you were going to say Yah, where will you get way from? And that's an E there. E-H, Yahweh. Where will you get Yahweh when we have Yah? yod Hey is the short form of the Most High's name. Yah, so you have those that say Yah-Wah. The reason why someone say Yah-Wah because they're recognizing the short form of the Father's name. And then under this Wah, they would have a quamets, which is an A-class vowel. That is the reason why um, we do not subscribe to the name Yahweh. However, someone uses the name Yahweh, we don't knock them or we don't make them feel any type of way. We're just saying from just the language itself and the way they have it vowel pointed in the books, either without the vowels or with the vowels, it still does not pronounce Yahweh. So that's why we don't subscribe to it. Um, but what I found is that there's been members of the Knesset or one in particular who went away to college and they was in our assembly and they was taking the, uh, our basic Hebrew here. And when they went to college, they took Hebrew in college. So when they came back from college, you know, I put some stuff on the board and was asking them to pronounce it out just to see what they learned while they was in school. And so they was pronouncing everything right. And I was like, Tobe, so they could pronounce everything. So I said, what did they tell you for the name of the father? And they said, Yahweh. I said, so how is it that you know all them grammar rules, you're using them right, but yet when it gets to the name of the father, it's Yahweh still, which goes outside of all the grammar rules that they even teach you in college. And at the institute they were in, that's what they were told that they have to use for that name. So again, they're told to use Yahweh, but 
you're teaching people Hebrew and you're teaching them grammar rules. And yet when you utilize the Hebrew grammar rules and the vowel points, the vowel point here is not an E-class vowel. That is the reason why we're laboring to study the language. And that's the reason why we make our stance on certain things. Like if a person comes against what we believe, we support what we believe based and backed up based upon the information that we can present um, from the language studies, from historical findings, so on and so forth. Okay, so I just want to put that out there. So there is a there is a satanic vibration to try to keep the name of the Most High Mass or not known to the people. So, and that's even when you go to the colleges at a collegiate level, and they still going to teach you the Most High's name after they done teach you all these grammar rules, but they will still teach you how to pronounce the Most High's name incorrectly. All right. So um, we're not we're going to skip all that. It's talking about flashcards, so on and so forth. Um, so they have it here where you can practice singing the Hebrew alphabet to English ABC tune. Note for the sake of the song's rhythm, we have included both forms of the three Bagad Kafet letters that change pronunciation with or without the Degesh call. We've put the second of the pair not normally included in the alphabet. It is uh, uh, superscripted, uh, a subscripted uh, position. So would someone like to do the uh, alphabet? in the ABC tune. Do I have any of that? Any volunteers? I'll go. OK. All right, goes. Uh, left, bet, bet. Give more dolly, hey. Wobs. <laughs> Wait, ABC, right? Got you. All right, I was singing it. All right. <laughs> that was good, though. You were doing good. <laughs> it, it's the um, it's, it's on YouTube, the how to do the alphabet. That's why I learned it. Okay, so go I ahead. can do it. You call me so it goes. Uh, left, fat, bet. Then you repeat it. Uh, left, fat, bet. Game or dollar, hey. Game or dollar, hey. Wow, iron head, tet. Wow, iron head. You skip oh, one. Wow, what did you, you call this one? Wow, wow, Zion head, tet. Wow, Zion head, tet. Oh. Oh, look. look, look oh, look. wait. Okay, so. Het. 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 Tet, you calf ha. Lamed, mem, noom, samek, iron, pay, fe, sadi, ku fresh, sin, sin, shin, taf. Oh, shin, sin, taf. No, 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 no. Sin, shin. Oh, uh, sin shin tough. All right. So, if anybody wants to pra practice your uh your alphabet, you can go ahead and practice trying to do it with an ABC English ABC tone. He used the Hebraic version that they have online, but it, uh, they try to make it go with the uh. Now I know my ABCs tune to this, so you can go back and practice this at your own time. But uh, the point of doing it is to recognize the letters. And it also has the Bagad Kafet letters, which normally would not be written in the alphabet, but to keep with the tune and for you to recognize uh, the letters, they put the Bagad Kafet letters in there, in there. All right. So again, well, we're going to skip this portion, but this shows you how to write the letters. And as me and Zakain Yaquab says regularly, in order for you to learn the letters and get more familiar with the letters and how to write the letters, if you would start writing your letters at least 10 times each, okay? Um, so I'm going to skip some of this and you can go back and do these practices. And this more so is going to be for like Bat Zion and uh, my bot and uh, Akoti Shaquan. But for again, for the beginners, if you would uh, start with the Hebrew primer and really learn your alphabet, really learn your, um, your vowel points, the names and the sounds. Okay. So here it says, write an English word for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet which has the sound of the Hebrew letter in it. Do not use the words given in the chart um, one and one. So um, here you can go and you can try to write words out with that, but I wanna to get to another point now for, all right. So we actually not gonna draw the lines on here, but I want you to, uh, uh, we have to do for the councils one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna start on this side so it's five. So if you could, it said draw lines to connect each letter with the cor corresponding final form. 
So uh, would someone call off what this letter is? With sleek out, let me do it the other way. My, well, no, they, they, they got it mixed up both ways. So what letter is this? Body. And where would you find it on the other side? Which letter would it be? The third one on the bottom. I mean, the third from the top. Third from the top. So uh, so this is Zadi. This is what it would look like at the beginning. And in the middle, that's it. OK. Well, well, thank you, Bob, Francis. Yeah, you, help us out. I, ain't, I don't know how to do all that fancy stuff. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So uh, we have here, what letter do we have here? The pay or the fay. The pay or the fay. And where, what letter would it be? It'd uh, be the fourth one down. So the fourth one down on this side. So that's it at the beginning or the middle of the word. That's the final form of what the pay or fay will look like. What letter do we have here? Noon. That's the noon. Sorry. That's the noon. Where would Andy, it be? To the last one, to the bottom. Last one to the bottom. So mm -hmm. that's what it will look like at the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word. This is what it will look like at the end of a word. What do we have here? That's the, um, is that's the cough? That's the cough. So what would it be on the other side? Is it the top? So we the one at the top. So it's the cough mm -hmm. at the beginning or the middle of the word, that's what it will look like. But at the end, it's what it, uh, this would be what it will look like at the end of the word. And the last one is the give me. So uh, what's the letter here? Ma'am. Ma'am. And the final form, since there's only one left, would be right here. So this is the beginning or the middle of a word. This will be the final form of a memo noon. So again, you can come here and practice these things um, here on the site. Um, so now we can do a little uh, jawline from the Hebrew proper name to the English equivalent. All right, readers. Zamir said, ooh, and anyone who wants to participate. All right, so. Judah, the fifth one down. Huh? Judah. Judah, you said the fifth one down? Fifth one on the right. You said the fifth one on the right? One, two, three, four. Yes, the fifth one. Are you sure? One, two, three, four, five? Yeah. Am I right? No? Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, is that the third one down on the right? It's the third one down on the right. So we have Judah. Yeah. So we yeah. have Yod, Hey, Wa, Dalit, Hey, Yahuda, Yahuda. So uh, also, when you start looking at certain things, like um, when you see them putting the name of the Most High as Ye, We, or Ye, Wei, with the E in front of, with the E in the beginning, but yet they, they would tell you Judah is Yahuda. you know, the father's name start off with the Yod, Hey, Wah, you know what I'm saying? So uh, you have Yahuda. okay? So then we have Jacob, where would Jacob be? The first one. The fifth one down. Which one you say? The fifth one down. The fifth one down, one, two, three, or five. Can you pronounce that for me? Yaikov. Yaikov, Yaikov, Yaikov. Okay, that's good. Hallelujah. But they only get super fast with them letter with the pointer now, boy. She got that arrow, arrow. <laughs> All right. So we have Levi. Six one down. Uh, you know, I said it's six one down, which we have what? La vie. La vie. La vie. La vie. La vie. La vie. Depending on the uh, dialect. Okay. Israel. The person. First one. Oh, the first one, which is, pronounce it out for me, someone. Israel. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Philistine. Seventh one down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Seventh one down. What do we have here? Mm, pet. I'm not even going to butcher that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Pelashin? <laughs> 
pelle. Shen. Pel. Pelis. Pelis. Palestine? I don't know. Palestine? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, like I said, uh, some of the words in English, they have like, you, it doesn't do the total justice, but yes. So you have the Philistine um, that you have here. All right. And so y'all can see how once you start pronouncing certain things, and that's why um, like the, uh, the scriptures version Bible, uh, the hallelujah scriptures, as well as the et safar, when you're reading using some of the Hebraic Bibles, you will uh, start to see where you'll be able to actually pick up the names a lot of times. Once you start reading in Hebrew, you'll, you'll recognize them from reading them in those versions of the Bible. All right. Uh, Shadrach. Which says that? The last one. Okay, she says the last one. Sound it out. So you said shadow what? Shadow rock. So she says shadow rock. I can take that shadow rock, but you have here a uh, shad rack, a shadow rock. All right. Abraham. This one might be a little tricky to you, but you still should probably get it. Abraham. Second one from the Second bottom. From the bottom. Huh? Second, Second from the bottom. bottom. All right. Pronounce it for me. Abraham. Say it again. Abraham. So almost of Abraham. Abraham. That that was a good one though. That was a good Abraham. one. You missed one letter. Abraham. 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 Yeah. So they, they have a vet here, but now that you see like what we're saying, why we still use the bet a lot of time, because his name is Abraham in English or Abraham, um, Aleph vet, Aleph bet. So that's why we still say Abraham, but they have it here, Abraham. All right, good job. So we have Adam. I mean, the fourth one. Fourth. The fourth, fourth one. one. All right. And it's the, I, I think that's a, okay. Adam. Adam, okay. Adam. Okay, that was good. Now, here's the thing. The sister said Adam, right? So if this was actually silent and there's no vowel under it, how does she still recognize this to be Adam? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So the ancients still knew that these letters did have a phonetic sound now, the way we pronounce them in English may not be exactly the sound. So I do understand what the Naku system is doing is trying to get us to pronounce things the way that they possibly could have been pronounced. But yes, that would be Adam, Aleph, Dalit, Mem. All right. And that's the final form, Mem. Y'all are doing great. We have Moses here. Second. Second. Which Second. Moshe. 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 Now, this one is going to be a little confusing. Um, so because it has to be here. Masha. Yes. Yeah, so, so, uh, so as the sister said, Masha, Masha, because with no vowel points, she don't see how to get Moshe unless you were going to use this as a holem, which that's not a holem right now. This is letting you know this is Shin. So right. you have Masha. Masha will be Moses without the uh, Nikud vowel system. With the Nikud vowel system in place, you have Moshe. Without it, you have Masha. Masha, Moshe. So one thing that uh, when I say being all things to all people, there are brothers that were not other brothers dialect of Hebrew, instead of just being understanding as to, I understand what they're saying because at its root form, that is masha, masha, you know? Now, if you put a vowel point here, you have to put a vowel point to get the Moshe. But right now that is masha, masha or Moshe. Hallelujah, and we have one left, which will be, we normally say Pharaoh, um, but they have it vowel pointed here. I mean, uh, somewhat different. So we normally say Pharaoh, but how do they have it pronounced here? Which one is it? Third one from the bottom. Third from the bottom. Which right. would be what? Farian, uh, Farra. <laughs> one more time, Eva, what you got? <laughs> For ya. They, they got this one scrabbled up, huh? <laughs> so they have uh, pay, that's pay. Resh, ayin, hey. Pay, resh, ayin, hey. Peray, peray. It's hard to say without the vowel points. So yeah. you have a uh, uh, parach. If you if you made this to be silent, you have parach. Uh, if you put the vowel points, they would say uh, paro. 
So without the vowel points, you will see how without the vowel points, sometimes you cannot get the modern Hebrew pronunciation without seeing those vowel points that they've added. So when you do hear brothers using those A-class vowels, the reason why they're using the A-class vowels are because at the root level, that's what they see um, uh, without any vowel points. So they pronounce it that way. All right, we're not gonna do all of them on this side, but I do want to, uh, but just to recognize a couple of them. Um, can someone tell me where Joseph is at on this side? Joseph. All right, which is our? Is it the first? The first one, pronounce it. Yosef. So you said Yosef, right? Uh -huh. So there will be some that without the vowel points would say Yawasaf. The reason why they say Yawasaf is because they don't see the vowel points, so they pronounce the Yod, Wa, uh, Samet, and right. Fe. But right. uh, we have here Yosef, Yosef, Yawasaf. Okay? Yawasaf. All right. Uh, we have. Sarah, can anyone find Sarah for me? It's the um, fourth the one. The fourth one? The fourth one, which would be what? She, I would say it's Shira. Look at it again. Shara. Jen. Okay, so look where this dot is at. Remember, that's, one, a, that's sin. a sin. That's a sin? Yes, yeah, a sin. So now I'll pronounce it. Sira. No, no, no. Okay. You got it almost right. But it's what? It's just an S. So okay. it's just an S and not SH. Mm -hmm. So an S with the round. What do you have? C. Um, C. No, no. Ray. No, no. Oh, okay. Okay. So Sarah. Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sarah. All right. Good job, Ms. Picard. Good job. Mm -hmm. um, so, and thank you so much, uh, Bat Zion, for, for that pointer. You have to teach me some of these tricks. So uh, that's why I can't even get so savvy on this computer. <laughs> okay, so find the names and letters. So that's something else we'll do later. But um, what I want to get to is, this is gonna be circle and final forms. But now here's the lesson that I want us to get to, lesson two. And this is for those that are already reading and we're gonna get to read after this. And then um, Zakane, I'll turn it back over to you if you wanna do any of the, uh, anything that you wanna do after this Zakane. I just kind of want to get to this part for those that will be uh, reading to help them with the pronunciation of some of those harder to pronounce words. Okay, so lesson uh, two um, is what I, I want Batzion and, and those that have been reading for a minute to be working on now, get more familiar with these letters, which is the Shewa. The Shewa is, as I can call it, not truly a vowel, but it represents a vowel, um, but it, it doesn't have an exact vowel sign like other vowels. So it's a Hebrew vowels and vowel signs. We have the simple shiwa, which is going to be the two dots that will go up under a consonant, okay? So we have the two dots that will go up under a consonant. This is called the shiva, a shiwa. Then we have compound shiwa, and the compound shiwa will be a, a shiwa along with another vowel beside it. So we have a shiwa with a, a patak, we have a shiwa with a sagol, and we have a shiwa with a komets. This is a compound shiwa. And we'll be, as we start going further into this for the readers, you'll start to see how to pronounce them when they when a she was associated with these other vowels. Then you have independent personal pronouns, verbless clauses, the gesh kazak, the gesh kal, um, the gluterals is what we, we're gonna be going into, and open and closed syllables. So the way a Hebrew word is written is consonant, vowel, consonant, but then they have what's considered open and closed syllables. So um Again, they have the vowel sounds here for everyone that want to see the vowel sounds uh, of the vowels. We're not going to spend time on this. Do that on your, on your own time. So uh, it said the biblical Hebrew vowels have the following characteristics. The vowels appear under, over, or following the consonant. They are pronounced after, for example, you have yod, kormetz, dalit, it's pronounced yod. So it's letting you know that you would take the Y sound from the consonant yod, along with the vowel sound of the uh, the quamets, which is ah, and then the dalit, which will give you yad. That's closed syllable, yad, meaning the dalit joined right to this first letter, yad. Now, if I would say yada, yada is open syllable. Yad is closed syllable, okay? So, but also if I was to take away this, uh, this vowel point, if it wasn't there, the way uh, one of us that normally reads Hebrew without the vowel points, 
we would either say yada or yad at this point because we recognize those words at the root level, which would have an A-class vowel sound anyway. So again, but for the sake of where we at, the vowel goes underneath the consonant and you pronounce the consonant letter value along with the vowel sound that's produced here. And that's where we get the ya, okay? It says some long vowels are written as a vowel point and a consonant. When hey, vav, or wa, or yod are used in this way, they are called vowel letters. They are not consonants in these cases. So basically what it's letting you know is that whenever one of these three letters, the hey, wa, or vav, shiga, the hey, vav, wa, or yod, whenever they are, are used as a vowel, they are not considered consonants in that moment, okay? It says um, the quamets here represents both long A-class quamets and short U-class quamets katuf. Um, distinguishing which vowel it represents in a given instance depends on knowing in what type of syllable it occurs. So that's why Zakane was saying that we can learn the basic vowels and the grammar rules, and we can we can do good with reading, and we can always read and still recognize what each other is saying. But for the sake of pronouncing some words and really hearing the pronunciation, um, these vowels and and depending on how they're written, sometimes will take on somewhat of a different sound and syllable. Uh, it said the vowels in biblical Hebrew are categorized by class A, class I, or class U. Some would say E class vowels, which which they re recognize them as. A class vowels, but what I want to get to is, and the only focal point for me right now is the simple Shiva. All right, the simple Shiva or Shiva. The vowel system created by the Tiberian Masoretes in 500 CE, meaning this was after uh, after uh, Abraham and our forefathers, which meant they did not use this particular dialect. They did not use Masoret vowel points. Uh, Moshe and none of them used these. But it says the vowel system created by the Tiberian Masoretes, 500 CE, required that every consonant have a vowel sign except at the end of a word. If a syllable ended in a consonant or began with two consonants in a row, it still required a vowel sign. That's why Zakane said last week it's not necessarily a vowel, that she was not really, really a vowel, but it's considered a vowel sign and it's going to tell you how to pronounce a word or how not to jumble up two consonants. So if you had a word that started with two C's, for example, like CC, like what would you pronounce that to be? Like, how would you pronounce CC? It would be hard to, so you need that, that vowel representation or that symbol or sign to help you with pronouncing certain words. So it says um, when certain, uh, certain um, when two consonants are in a row, you need a vowel sign. Or, um, so for this purpose, they use the Shiwa, which means nothingness. So the term Shiva or Shiva means nothingness, meaning it's really nothing. It doesn't represent a vowel, but it does represent a vowel, so to speak. The sign is not properly a vowel, but in some places it is a vocal pronounced like a hurried A. A hurried A as in above. So we don't say above, and we ain't saying above. We're getting right to the point above. So it's showing you how to hurry the pronunciation. So it says, uh, so a vocal shiva is pronounced like a hurried A as in above. Again, we don't say above or above, it's above, above. So it's quicker to the point. So what the shiva is telling you when it's used as a vocal shiva is you hurry the pronunciation or you shorten the pronunciation, don't make the long ah sound, it's just the uh above, okay? So uh, transliterated with the uh, upside down E. So um, we have here, would someone um, pronounce this for me? Barit. Say it again. Barit. Barit. Does anyone know what Barit is? What is Barit? That's the word for covenant. So you ever heard us say Barit Kadasha? Barit Kadasha? That's the word for covenant. But, uh, as, and that was a good pronunciation too, uh, Akoti. So Akoti said Barit. She didn't say, so you see here that this is, uh, what letter is this first letter? A B. A B. Bet. Bet. What's Bet. inside of it? A dot, let's what you call it the guess. Let us know you pronounce it as a B. So normally it will be Bach, right? Normally that will be Bach. But we don't say 
Barit, Barit. Why? The Shiwa says, hurry up. Don't say Barit, Barit. 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 That's what the Shiwa's doing. So it still has a sound or pronunciation, but it itself doesn't have a sound. It is telling you to hurry up this, this particular consonant because another consonant comes right after it. Because again, Hebrew is consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. So instead of you saying Barit, uh, Barit, you know, Barit, you, you hurry this up because the Shewa is here. And at the beginning of a word, it's generally going to be a vocal Shewa. If the Shewa is at the beginning of a word and not followed by another Shewa immediately, that's going to tell you to hurry that sound. So that's how you have Barit, Barit. All right. Good job. In other places, it is a silent place marker showing that the preceding syllable is closed. So remember closed syllable. So um, bara, bara is open syllable because you pronounce each syllable separately, bara. But now it's saying in other places, it is a silent place marker showing that the preceding syllable is closed. So this is going what, you know, sometimes when the words are scrambled, not necessarily scrambled, but when you start having more and more letters to words and you're trying to figure out how to pronounce them, these, this is where the shiwa comes in to help at. So it's kind of giving it to you here, but try to ignore this and just, if you look, well, it's hard to ignore if, you're, if you've already seen it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read it out. So we have the mem with herek. So we have me. Instead of you saying me da, me da, you know, because it has this vowel point on it. But if any other vowel point would have been on it, it would have been a comets or patat or something. Or even if it was no vowel point, generally you would say me da, which would make it an open syllable, me da. So we might say me da bar or me da bara. But here, consonant vowel, consonant vowel placeholder, hurrying or pausing or joining the syllable together. So it's letting you know that you don't say me da, the mead, the D joins to the syllable, which makes mead, mead bar, mead bar. So at the beginning of a word, it's telling you to hurry this, uh, hurry the pronunciation. So instead of saying barit, you say barit. Here it is telling you that when this comes up, um, uh, when two consonants coming back to back like this, you have mead, it's closing the syllable. Mead, mead bar, mead bar, okay? It said a shiva is vocal at the beginning of a word. A shiva is vocal at the beginning of a word. So uh, for an example, that's the shin with a shiwa. So we have shimoch, 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 not shamoch, shimoch, shimoch. If that shiwa wasn't there, that would have been shamoch, shamoch. With the shiwa there, shamoch, all right? At the beginning of a syllable, at the beginning of a syllable, so they have here um, the mem with a uh, shiwa at the beginning of a syllable. So would someone try to pronounce this one out for me? With the rule that you just seen earlier, when it's coming right uh, after um, a syllable or another consonant. Yishmaru. Yishmaru. Say it again. Yishmaru. Yishmaru. So it wasn't yish maru. It wasn't yisha maru. It's yish with the with the rule that we just learned previously. Yish because it's not closed this syllable. Yish instead of saying yish yish yisha yisha. You we try to figure that out. You realize that it's, not, it's more comfortable and easier. Yish yish maru yish maru not yish maru because again. This is telling it to hurry it, so it still takes on a vocal. Yeesh, here is not necessarily a vocal as much because it's closing a syllable. Yeesh, maru. Yeesh, maru. At the beginning of a syllable. So at the beginning of a syllable, it has a sound. Note, here's one of the good points that I want to get to. Note, if two shiwa are adjacent in a word, the first is silent and the second is vocal, following a long vowel. So uh, it says, note, if... Two shiwa are adjacent in a word. The first is silent and the second is vocal. So you have two uh, back to back. The first one will be silent. The uh, second one would be uh, would be uh, vocal, all right? Following a long vowel. So um, what do we have here? 
Susechem. 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 Because it still had a vocal here because it's beginning a syllable. Okay. Good job. And I'm almost going to stop at this point here. And Zakane Yaquab, um, if you want to take over for the reading or anything you want to go into, I just want uh, Bat Zion and, um, and those that have already been reading, uh, uh, Koti Shaquan, if y'all would study lesson two um, on your own. And this is going to help you with your pronunciations and using those Shiwa. And there was one other thing that I wanted to go to, but we'll get to that next week. All right. So I'm going to yield at this point, Zakane Yaquab. I yield the floor to you for whatever reading practice or whatever you would like to cover. I just want to get to this part for us to really work on that Shiwa. So uh, Zakane, myself, Kanakya, Zamiria, all of us that have been reading, um, that read pretty fluently, let us work on uh, getting better with our pronunciations by studying this portion on Shiwa and the function of the Shiwa. Um, so I yield, uh, Zakane, um, I yield the floor to you uh, for the remainder of the class. Toda, Maury. Toda. I need to share my screen too. <clears throat> ka, ka. All right, Mr. Ka. Nope, that's not the one I want. Okay, give me just a second. I don't know how I dropped that. I'm gonna stop share for a second. And I need to pull up. That's just taking a minute to load, but but we're gonna go into the reading practice. And like I said, we're gonna stay in Genesis. Um, and, and this is to give um, those that have been reading a while and those that are just beginning to read to get the understanding of, of reading. Um, I just want you to listen, I, I just, just listen and pay attention to the, um, the consonant vowel combination as the readers read, pay attention to the consonant vowel um, uh, combinations. All right, share screen. All right, can y'all see that? You may need to zoom in quite a bit as I can, I think. Or oh, could it be because my Zoom page is uh, yeah, mine. It's huge on my on my on my. Oh, okay, no, I can make the other side smaller. That's my that's on my screen. That's good, as I can. All right, how is that? Yeah, it's good. It's told. Okay. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna stay in Genesis, the first chapter, and like I said, um, just pay attention those that are just starting to read, because this this session right here, I want to give the readers that have been reading a chance to read um, um, more than just uh, one one verse, so they can get some some practice in, and especially uh, based on what Moray Samat just went into, you know, with these she was, the she was, uh, and the final forms. Um, so, so pay attention to that. And first up, um, a Koti Shaquan, if you would, if you could take verse one and two. Okay. Um, Bereshit okay. bara Elohim eight Hashamayim wa eight Haaret. Waha Aret Yahata. Oh, no. Hayata. Tahu. Okay. Tahu. Say that again. Tahu. There you go. Wabohu. Waashek. No, Wayoshek. What's that letter? Oh, Wakoshek. There you go. Al Pane. Let's remember what we just went over. Oh, okay. That's that Shiwa. Hold Thank on. 
Pene. <laughs> there you go. To whom? To home. There you okay. go. Oh, geez. Okay. Rawuk. Rawuka. Uh, Rawuka. Um, I, I'll let you go with the Waruk. Okay. Wa but but I'll explain it after you get done reading. Okay. Elohim. Mera Kafet. Mera Kafet. El. All. Pene. Hamayi. Uh, good job. Good job. I can see you practicing. I can see Hold you practicing. And, and you saw how you got to put that she with it that Maury just went into detail on. You see how you had, how, how that works, right? Yes, it makes a whole lot of sense when he was explaining. So I'm going to have to work on that now. <laughs> God, God, but you did good with it. You did good with it. Um, for this Ruach, Ruach, it's a little, um, um, and, and I'm not sure if this is the, the there's some things called, um, uh, what's it called? Um, effective and defective writing. And, and I don't, I'm not sure if this, because I don't know if this is the way it looks in every print, but the way they have it situated here, you see how this, um, how this patak is, is kind of offset. And remember, this is this is holding the place of a of a verb. It's not really a verb. So it's got waru, 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 right? So we got the the consonant. We got the consonant vowel consonant. I mean vowel. Uh, all right. So the way it's offset here, it's 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 waru, mm -hmm. waru. Ah, that's the way they got it set oh, up. Ah, get, okay, okay. Because it's not like root. that. I right. see now. Okay. Right. And that's how you get root ah, out of that. But even so, some some readers will say waruk. They won't they won't say the ruach. They just say waruk. So when you said waruk, technically it, it, it's correct, but they do have the vowel here and the way they got it offset. And I got to do the research on that. I don't know if this is effective or defective writing. I, I don't remember seeing it in any other way um, with the with the with the offset vowel here, but that's how you get ru ru ah. Zakane, um, that'll be one of the ones that we we'll go into. Uh, uh, not even with it's not even that the vowel is actually really even the offset is not even really what we have to focus on. Um, is at the end of a word there's certain letters that you know how it's normally consonant vowel consonant, but at the end and when it's closing the syllable. Um, for this word here, it's pronouncing the vowel before the actual consonant, which is not normal. So that's where you get ra ra ruach, and some will say ra ruk ra 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 wa wak is what right. uh, some that don't use vowel points they say ra wa wak. But uh, so the vowel is actually being being pronounced before the actual consonant only is in these instances. But we'll go into that later. Kan tuda tuda. But good reading, uh, Akoti Shaquan. Good reading. I can see the practice. Hold on. Practice. Um, I see um, Alicia. Uh, uh, my bad, Alicia has a hand raised. The floor is yours. Why is Vav pronounced Wa in this sense? And the uh, the Wa Ruach. Okay. Word? Why is that Wa? Um, I'll tell you what, um, but Zion, can you read, uh, verse one? And this, this will answer your question, um, um, but Alicia. Bar uh, Barashit, Bara Elohim, et Hashamayim, wa et, uh, <laughs> uh, va et, or wa et. Ha Aret. Toda, you see how she she goes with the um with the more modern va, vaet, vaet. But like uh Maurice Mock and I were saying that that we believe the ancients didn't use va or vet. 
We believe the ancients before this Nakud system, uh, like our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we believe anciently that they didn't use this as a fa and they didn't use uh, the B as a vet. We believe it was it was wa and and, and bet. There, we didn't we don't believe that there was a vet and a va. All right, but in modern this would be a va. So that's why you're hearing um, uh, Koti Shikwan saying wa, and most of us you'll hear us say wa. But those that are studying under the Nakud system with the Nakud rules are going to use it as a as a va. That answer your question. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up will be um, Akoti Zamiria. You on with us? Okay. All right. Verses three and four, Baba Kasha, please. Why Yomir, Elohim, Yahi, or Why Yahi, or Why Yara? I mean, Why Yo? Waira, Elohim, eight, Haor. Uh, uh, come back. Let's look at this. Oh, et. There you go. Haor, Ki, To, Waya, Bud, Dale, Elohim, Bain, Haor, Wa, I mean, Ubain. Ha to job, to job. Um, um, and and just you know, because it will catch you. Even even the the advanced readers, these those that have been reading for a while, um, sometimes it'll catch us off guard. These these dalits and these and these reshes. And then remember that shiwa, that shiwa. Is it at a closed uh, syllable or is it an open syllable? That's what you got to remember. To job, to job, and then. Because up here we see, um, uh, where am I at? Uh, we see eight here. They got it eight here with, with the way they got it vowel pointed. They got it eight. But we see down here, they have it et, et. All right? So just pay attention to that. I mean, I mean, we do that sometimes too in, in just regular modern English reading. You know, we're used to saying it one way, and so we, we say it that way regardless of how it's spelled. Just pay attention to that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but Zion, let's take five, six, and seven. Why uh, a Wayak Ra, Wayakra, just kidding. Vayakra or Wayakra, <laughs> Elohim, La Or, Yom, Wala Koshek, or Wala Koshek, Kara, Lila, Vayahi, um, Erev, I can't see that. I think it's Erev. Okay, Erev. Um, Just a second. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Wayahi, Boker, Yom, Echad. Why, why Yomer, Elohim, Yehi, Rakia, Rakia, um, Batoke, but Batok, Hamayim, Wayihi, oh, wait, oh, why, way, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, that's a yo to e. Wayihi. Oh, Vayihi. Okay, I'm sorry. You got to show me that. Vayihi. Vihi. You're saying it. Okay. Um, 
You want me to read that that word again? Yeah. Okay. I want to say we he or the he. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a tricky one for Keep me. Going. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> Mav Dill. Mav Dill. Bain. Mayim. La Mayim. Why ya ash Elohim? Oh, I'm sorry. Why la? Why ya ash ash? Why ya ash? There you go. Elohim eight harak. I'm sorry. Et. There you go. <laughs> I did this. Et harakia. Vaya vadel. Bain hamayim. Asher, mitah, mitahem, t, wait, mitahet. No, what's that? Het, it's a ket, mitahet, um, larakia, I'm sorry. Mitahat. Mitahat, toda. Larakia, ubain, hamayim. Asher, Me'al, Larakia, Me'al, Larakia, Wayahi, Wayahi, Ken. Hallelujah. Ka, ka, ka. Oh, yeah. Good reading, good reading. And, and you see, you're starting to read it and not just like word, 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 word. You're starting to read it. All of y'all are starting to read it. And for those that are just beginning to read, just, just pay attention to that. Um, and then when we really get into uh, syllabalizing and all of that, you'll start to see where a particular clause ends and where the next clause begins. Tob, tob reading, tob reading. Um, Adon uh, Kanakia, you're in here with us? I think I saw your name in here. Okay, I'm here. I want to take eight through ten, and we'll call it. We'll call it uh, complete after that. Why you cry, Elohim? Lara Kia, Shemayim. Why he? What's that one? Oh, Shemayim. Shemayim. That what you said? Okay, Shemayim. Uh, All right. Why are he? Why are he? Boker, Yom, Shani, Shani. Why are Mir? Elohim. Ye, Yiku. Yiku, 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 Hashemayim, El, Makom, Echad, Watera A, Hayabasha, Wayihi Kane. Last one. Wayikra, Elohim. Laya Basha, Aritz, Ulami Kwa We. Good job. Hamayim, Kwara, Yamim, Why you're Why you Why you Why Elohim, Kito. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. And, and you see, um, you know, um, if, if you're not practicing these words, practicing these words, and then you have to take your time and break them down. You have to take your time and break them down. But that's where the practice comes in 
right? So, so like Moray was saying today, uh, verse one is your better sheep, bara Elohim et Hashemayim Haaretz, right? So, so you already know it. If when you're practicing it, you already know it, you know, so you can read it just like cat. We know what cat is. So we really don't spend time saying could at, right? And so that's, that's the point I was trying to make when we're reading these, we're picking up our vocabulary. So when we see it, we automatically know it, you know, Haaretz. we should we, you know, as many times as we've read that, we should, we should, we should just read right through it. So better sheep bara Elohim et hashamayim wa et haaret. You know what I mean? And that's what we're trying to get to. Once we once we can get to that level where we're recognizing these words um, and not having to break them down, then we can really start getting into um, comprehension, breaking these words down, and then really looking at the syntax of what the sentence is actually saying. And then uh, by the time we're 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 um hopefully at the end of of this first chapter then we can start to see what our ancestor is actually saying instead of having to read it from this greco-roman point of view now i'm not saying this greco-roman point of view is bad i'm just saying but but we can see it from a hebraic point of view of what our ancestors are trying to do that's where we're trying to get to so Tob Tob job, everybody. Um, those that didn't get a chance to read next week, I'm gonna be focusing on you <laughs> and, and pulling you uh, up to read. So practice, practice, practice. Moray Samak just showed you how to get to these on, um, well, I don't know if this one is in, in uh, the website, the Hebrew Reader, but um, you can go to blueletter.com and get it in the Hebrew. Um, those that have a Safar, those that have a, a JPS Hebrew reader, you know, all of those have the, um, what they call the uh, inner linear. All right, any questions? Any questions? And I do want to point out too, you know, like this uh, Hashemayim, if we, if, you know, when we're reading it and we say Hashemayim, we know what it means, right? But if, if we're in like class, um, in a class setting, um, um, we're gonna say it properly, hashamayim, hashamayim. But I mean, when we're talking to each other, it's hashamayim, 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 you know? <laughs> tob job, tob job, everybody. I just want you to, to see that, get into practice, open this up uh, once or twice a week, and, and, and go over it, like verse one through verse three, just read them, verse one through verse three, verse one through verse three. And when you're done with that, move on to verse four, five, six, and get this, really you're building your vocabulary. You're, you're building your vocabulary. So when you see these words, Bereshit, when you see Elohim, when you see Hashemayim, when you see Haaretz, you already know it. When you see Waruach, you already know it. And we are already using it, like you saw, uh, la yala, right? And the most high call the darkness la yala, night. And we say that every time, you know, la yala tov. We already know it. We just didn't know what it looked like. You know what I mean? So tov, tov job. Maurice Samak, you, um, you have any closing words? Oh, no, y'all did a, uh, uh, turn your pipe off, sir, because it's echo. Uh, no, just everyone did an outstanding job. Um, all praise to the Most High, and thank y'all for your participation because it definitely gives us encouragement. Um, uh, and, and you know, we we'll only grow further in the language. And as you go more and more, the more excited you'll get. And especially when you're reading it with comprehension, like, and that's the goal for us to get to the point of reading pretty much the majority of, or all of the scriptures uh, in Hebrew. Like that should be our goal. So, um, like I said, a little bit at a time, let's eat our vegetables. I thank y'all for tuning back in to get your veggies in and, you know, we continue to grow. And next year this time, you'll be a lot further than what you were this time next year. So all praise and esteem to the most high. Thank y'all for your times and patience and y'all diligence in trying to learn this language. Hello, yeah, hello, yeah. Shabbat shalom. Uh, one question. Um, I know Alicia, um, my bot Alicia wanted to screenshot um, um, the handy Hebrew. Did you get that when I pulled it up? Oh, we didn't pull it up. Um, I uh, ended up looking up 
the um, like a like a I guess you'd call it the map and with all the alphabet letters on it. Okay, but I and just want you to know that that some some of those are kind of look different, they're aesthetically different. So that's why we want everybody on the same on the same page. So if it looks a little bit different than that handy Hebrew chart. Um, you might you might just struggle just a little bit, but 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 um, if that's good for you, it's good for me. Uh, Adon um, Kanakia, you want to uh, close us out with Tefila? Okay. I didn't Shabbat Shemayim, Yit Kodesh. I'll be honest, we continue to study your language and your culture. We ask Abba that you continue to bless us to retain the memory of the language, the letters, the vowels, and the vocabulary words as we continue to labor to study your language as you have, as you have written it. We ask Abba that you continue to bless each of the minds of the readers, whether they be beginners or those that may be a little more advanced, that we may all grow to the level of speaking your language with clear understanding. We thank you all for those who take the time to teach the language. Mori Sabak and Zaki and Yaikwa, that you continue to instill in them that the words that they speak may be easily understood unto the hearers. We continue to thank you on this day, this set apart day that you have made. Blessed be a whole creator on earth. Let's be a name, Yahuwah, Kravit, and Earth, and bless you comes in name, Yahuwah, Kravit, and Earth. Hallelujah. Come on, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Mishpaka. Ahaba and Shalom. Layla Tob. Shabbat Shalom. Love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.